Hello and welcome to my workshop. Today we're going to configure Mac 3 with this little SIG X2 um, CNC conversion. And what I mean by that is we're going to set up Mac 3 um, as a completely into a, a completely new configuration for a new machine. Um, it's really, really simply done. If you do it carefully in stages, we're going to do the motor tuning. We're going to set the machine home position without limit switches. Okay, so the, at the moment there's no limit switches connected to this. I will eventually, but at the moment there's no limit switches. So we're going to set it up uh, without limit switches. And I'll show you how to do that. And then we're going to set up the soft limits uh, within Mac 3. So Mac 3 effectively limits the travel of this so it doesn't sort of bash into hard limits or what is known as hard limits, which is the absolute end of travel, which isn't a very nice thing to do. By doing that, sometimes you can lose steps on your motor and the should we say Mac 3 can go out of syn synchronization with where the table is in relation to the cutter, even just slightly. So it's not really a very nice thing to do. So I always run on soft limits. Whether a CNC machine has limit switches or not, I always use soft limits. So Mac 3 will look something like this. This is the opening screen uh, when you open it. You go into config and then go to ports and pins. Now your port on your computer might have a different address uh, to this. This port here, 278, is normally the old type uh, 25 pin printer port. I'm using a different port on my my machine to suit the CAD for Mac 3 that I have. Now then motor outputs in my particular case are the x-axis step and direction so it's 4 and 5, y-axis 6 and 7 and z-axis 8 and 9. These are the pin numbers actually on the plug that plugs into the back of your computer which relate to the connection on the board. I'll just get a, uh, an old board. Now, this is a typical back three board and these pin connections that uh, they're referring to here, or I'm referring to, these pin holes or connection holes in the board. And they start on the, you notice one side is longer than the other. So if I get something to point with, you might be able to see better. So this is number, pin number one, and it goes two, three, four, five, and so on, all the way up to the top here, then comes down the other side. So pin number four here is this one here. So that's pin four, pin five, pin six, pin, pin seven, and so on. They coincide with uh, the connection that the computer is communicating with. Okay, so here, here are the pin numbers here, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, there. So really we're concerned with the first 9 pins normally. In my case, with the uh, stepper motors, uh, I'm new, using NEMA 23s. Now, the way mine are connected up, now... Uh, this is high and low, okay, connections. What that really means is whether it's positive or negative. Now, if, for example, you have your Z axis, when you connect it up, go in, when, when you press the Z plus, it goes in the, the Z at the X minus uh, direction. You can reverse, and, and you want it the other way around, you can, all you do is tick that box or, or click on that box that will go to a green tick and then tick on that one that will go to a red cross and that will invert or re it will to change it around and, and the axes will move in the opposite direction so that's how you change the direction direction of an axis 
input signals. These are no this is a quite a normal setup. You can freeze frame this and uh, take the information yourself. Output signals. This is the minimum that you should have. Uh, okay. Th this is relating to an e-stop. And you really don't want to bother about anything like that. All the spindle setting up. And really that's it. That's the bare essentials that you would, you, you would need. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to jog this uh, DTI gauge, just dull test indicator gauge, um, over to just the edge of here. Uh, so I've got a surface to, to register off. Uh, it's quite it's firm enough. And I have it can, the dull test indicator connected to the X axis. And in Mark 3, we're going to use Mark 3 to calibrate the X axis. Uh, now to do that, what you do is just jog to position. I'll just turn that around and zero it. You see this is very a very very accurate device. You've only got to touch it. Um, each full revolution is one millimeter. Now what we do, we go into settings and we come down to here and open up steps per, we're going to uh, check the X axis, press OK. I'm going to put two millimeter, uh, I'm going to put one millimeter in here. Now when I press this, um, this should register, let's just correct this. This should register one complete turn. Oh, actually that was two, exactly two complete turns. So that's, it moved twice the amount. So in here, in this box, I'm going to say that moved, so it moved two millimeters. And I'm going to press OK. Now it's saying here, Mark 3 has worked it out that the steps per with these um, lead screws and these motors for this machine to be absolutely perfect should be 320 steps. And you say, accept that. And you OK it. Okay, so we can come out of that screen now and go back into config, check the motor tuning, and indeed it has altered. And what you can do then is, because all my lead screws are exactly the same, they're the same pitch, and I have the same type of motor on each one, so that means this figure here, steps per, is going to be the same for each axis, identical. Acceleration, I normally find three, 300 is absolutely fine. Velocity, 1500, fine. I, you can play around with those if you like, um, but I normally find those fine uh, for a, a standard type of machine. Okay, now we come to setting the home position of the machine. It's not really any great mystery to this. Okay, so what you need to do is take your axes to their um, close, as close as you dare to their limit, carefully. So we're a little bit faster than that, maybe. That's it for the Z. I, I know exactly where you can mark with a with a pen or a texture or something on you know your, your axes exactly how far you want to go or what you want to call your your maximum for your axes so uh, we'll do it now for the okay so we're going to move the y over first now i know that uh, I, well i want this to stop about two millimeters before it 
meets this surface here. So, if I get, if I get a measuring device and just move to it. Very quietly, very quietly. So there you go, there's about, about two millimeters there. Now I want to call that my soft limit there. And I know on the other side here, I know I can allow, I can allow the Y to travel 107 millimeters. Now that. I know, now I, I've got the Y at its, should we say, soft maximum. I'm going to move the X now into the perceivable, its soft maximum. And I know it's within about a millimeter here. I can judge that one myself without being measured. Okay, that I'm going to call that my soft maximum. I, I like to allow it, you know, at least a millimeter there. So now I know each axis is at their maximum travel, or this is the position I want to make the machine home. Machine coordinates. Now this is where the I, I suppose the confusion comes in. How do you make those zero? You can't press the ref all because the machine the Mag3 will want to actually move the axes and find the limit switches. We don't have limit switches. The easiest way to do this is switch your machine off. Now then, the machine is not working, the CAD is not working, but Mac 3 st still thinks it's connected to it. So the easiest way to do this, you have machine um, coordinates turned on, and you, tog you, you just jog Mac 3 to, uh, let me see, that's, uh, let's go the Z first. You just jog. That's actually jogging, jogging a little too fast. So what I'm going to do is press the tab, which flies out the pendant there, and I'm going to reduce the jog down significantly. Uh, well, actually, five, five percent is fine. I think I can manage with that. Tab away again, and. Jog, 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 jog. This is um, this is each each. See zero point four, or zero point four of a millimeter. So you know we, we can get very very close here. It doesn't necessarily have to read absolute zero. This is a, a very very minute figure. This is less than a thousandth of an inch. I'm going to call that zero. It's fine. Uh, now the X, I'm going to do the same. Go to config, come down to homing and limits. Now what you need to do is for like for the X, I've already pre-done this. It's, it's very easy. You just fill this, this in. The X is 230, the Y, as I've just said, measured is 107, that's where you put it there. And the Z is, I now I consider the soft limit for that one, uh, is uh, 125. Um, so that is where you, f you fill that in there, and that's okay. I think that's close enough. Now, do you remember just now when I was um, jogging this over, uh, I had a millimeter left. This is why I've given myself a little bit of leeway here. Okay, so what we need to 
to do now, what, I, what I've actually done is because of the configuration of my axes, uh, I need to ensure that the Z is in a very, very slight minus uh, reading. The Y is in a very slight plus reading and the X is in a very slight minus reading as well because it is, it's the way the configuration of my axes and you can turn your soft limits on like that. So I have now taken the machine out of its limits then and I am just going to put on fast feed by pressing shift and I am going to take the first of all the Z up to its uh, maximum and the soft limits will shut it off uh, as it reaches um, the boundary that we have set. There you are, Mac 3 has recognized the soft limit and it shut that axis down. The same with the, uh, we'll do the Y and the same with the X. There you go, same with the X. And there you go. We have now all zeros in the machine work area and uh, indeed uh, we're in the machine um, zero position. In fact what I've actually done is I put a little V-bit uh, carving tool in and I've actually on the soft limits I've carved out the the full area or that um, or should I say that the working footprint of this this machine uh, and that's how big it is so that is how to set the soft limits for your machine and you can run on soft limits no problem at all so I hope you've liked this short video today of setting up Mac 3 in relation to a new CNC or a new conversion version of CNC just basic information and the setting up of the um, machine coordinate the easy way to do it in Mac 3 and also setting up the soft limits to, to run your machine and indeed setting up the um, the the motor tuning in Mac 3 which you absolutely need to do first I hope you've liked this video today if you have please press like and uh, subscribe to my channel that's pretty good and uh, come and have a look on my channel see what else is there you'll find CNC machines CNC routers um, wood turning and uh, 3d printing and shop jobs that I do around here a lot of other types of interesting things that I do so um, bye for now